Yeah, so we're, we're doing this series at the moment that's called The Freedom Stream. Uh, this is week four. Um, and what that's all about really is, is sort of really core foundational principles that we want to live our Christian life about and, or core things that we, that we believe. So week one was God is good. Uh, week two was I am significant. Week three was I will trust God. And then today I'm speaking about um, I will value my secret life with God. And at the end we've got like a statement that we're going to read out all together about our secret life um, uh, with God. But I have to say when, when I got this topic my uh, initial reaction was that I should swap it with the one that Cara was doing, because she's got one in about a month on like community, and I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do one with community. Um, I didn't, I didn't sort of, I, I thought she could do a better job, to be honest, about talking about our secret life with, um, with God. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I realised that I was completely missing the point if I did that, if I swapped with Cara, because actually what that was showing is that I didn't actually value my secret life with, with God. Um, and so actually it, I really felt like the Holy Spirit, you know, really convicting me that I should actually be sort of sharing about this. And, and in his grace, I really, really felt he, he spoke to me. Because I guess I feel like my relationship with God tends to be sort of quite intellectual and quite a, a thoughtful person. And, and when I look at this, the statement that we will read at the end, you'll see it's, it's quite emotional. And I'm not a particularly emotional sort of person. I'm the sort of person like when you're in a meeting and you shut your eyes and you pray and then you open your eyes and everyone else is on the floor and I'm the one who's standing. You know, I'm, I'm one of those sort I'm sort of one of those sorts of um, people. And I really related to the word that Josh Josh shared actually. You know, again I look up and I see I see the dirty ceiling and I forget that actually God's there behind. And when we're thinking about our value, our, se our secret life with God, I guess I'm one of the people who, when I think about my secret life with God, I think about, I see the dirty ceiling and forget that actually God is beyond it. And actually it's always about God. It's never about what we sort of see, see in front of us. And, and really it is that call to greater intimacy, isn't it? A greater intimacy with the Holy Spirit and greater intimacy, intimacy with, uh, with Jesus. And so, have the next, the next slide. So, so uh, as I was sort of thinking about this whole subject of, of, you know, our secret time with God, the verse that I kept thinking about was, was these verses, and, I, and I've got two different versions up, um, the, the NIV and the easy to read version. And I have to say, I think these are some of the most challenging verses in the Bible, at least for me, I find them incredibly challenging. Um, it says, I'll read the NIV version, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I look at those verses and I think, how on earth do you pray continually? Like, not just, you know, for 10 minutes. How do you pray continually? Um, and then I looked, again, I looked at this even more, and I realised it wasn't just saying, like, do one thing continually. You had to do all of these things, all at the same time, continually. Now, doing more than one thing at once, Cara will tell you, that's not in my skill set. So, like, doing three things at once, that was the sort of real real a real challenge and it's really tempting to look at these verses and, and actually get into the whole self-condemnation thing that I should be doing more you know I only pray for 10 minutes perhaps today I should pray for 15 minutes you know that will get me a bit closer to continually you know um, and and actually again that is completely missing the point because it's impossible isn't it if we try and do this in our own strength 
If we try and always be full of joy, if we try and pray continually, if we try and give thanks and all, we can't do it. I don't know about you, but there's absolutely no way I can pray continually. I can't do it in my own strength. The only way I can do it is through communion with the Holy Spirit. I've got to engage with Jesus. I've got to engage um, with, with the Holy Spirit. So if you're sat there thinking, oh, my secret life with God, I need to do better, I need to do more, okay, that's not the point of what this talk is about. Because it's the wrong way round. The way you get to this place is by spending time with, with, with God and with the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, you'll realise he's good. So that was week one. You'll realise that you're significant. That was week two. You'll realise you can trust him. That was week three. And actually, you'll value your secret life with God, and actually, you'll want to spend more time with Him. And you, and it then becomes a place out of um, out of joy, really, rather than out of duty. Because it says, doesn't it? Rejoice always. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I think, oh, I've got to be this smiley, happy Christian. I've got to rejoice always. And that that's completely false again, isn't it? Because it's not talking about being happy. It's talking about having that really deep certainty that you're saved, that Jesus died for you. That, that's the sort of joy that, that it's talking about, that whatever happens in your life, that God is good, that, that you're significant, that you can trust him. I keep coming back to those those things we've learned over the last few weeks. It's that your, your sins are forgiven that you can spend eternity with the creator of the universe. That's the sort of joy that it's talking about when we're to rejoice always. You know, when it says pray, pray continually, this isn't about like kneeling by your bed you know, all night or signing up for three sessions on the next 24 hour prayer. Uh, it's about knowing that we're utterly dependent on God. It's seeking like a continual awareness of his presence, whatever we're doing during the day, it's just knowing that God is there with us. It, it's that sort of constant communion. It, it's acknowledging him, that he's with us all the time. I mean, I don't know about you, but I forget sometimes that God's with me. Um, that's often when I sin, actually. It's because I've forgotten God is with, with me. And actually, I think that's what it's talking about when it says pray continually and giving thanks it's not about adopting some sort of you know false attitude that everything's okay you know oh yeah you know this terrible thing's happening but hey thank you very much you know it's not it's not about that it is but it is recognizing that God is sovereign and that we have to surrender to him um, and, and we have to do that even when it when it's difficult um, and recognising that sometimes we're sharpened in those those difficult those difficult times, and that all comes from alone time with the Holy Spirit. You've got to work that out with with the Holy Spirit yourself. So, again, I think a really great example always is Jesus, isn't it? And he often went off and prayed on his own. And quite often in the Gospels, it says things like he went to a secluded place to pray or he went off to the mountain to pray. And you're sort of sat wondering, at least I am, what, you know, what were those times that life for Jesus with, with Father on his, on, on his own? And we do actually get a glimpse of two occasions where he went off on, on his own. The first was... Uh, um, when he was, went into the desert to be tempted. Um, and actually, I think that's really interesting, uh, you know, because he was, you know, he was in the desert on his own, but Satan came, came to tempt, tempt him. And, and again, that's often, I don't know about you, but that's my experience. It's often when I'm on my own and I'm dwelling on things, thinking about, about you know, things that actually, that's when Satan comes and, and, and tempts me. 
And I think we all do that, don't we? Our mind wanders, and we, you know, we go down these sort of rabbit holes of, of negative, negative, um, negative thinking. And then the other example is the Garden of uh, Garden of um, Gethsemane. You know, just before Jesus' death and resurrection, you know, we have that time where he went away from the disciples to really wrestle with the whole issue of the fact that he was going to die for our sins and, and, and he really wrestled that out with 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 god um, so you can read about that that temptation of jesus in in matthew 4 verses 1 to 11 we haven't got time to read it all out out now um, but the first verse says that you know the spirit led jesus into the desert and uh, and you, you may well be familiar with the story but he's tempted three times by by satan and each time he uses scripture to counteract what satan says and again it just got me thinking about that alone time with the father um, and you know again i was saying about myself being quite intellectual you know i i know quite a lot of scripture up up here but what Jesus did, he didn't just know scripture up here. He knew how to use scripture. He knew how to apply scripture when he was tempted. It, it, it was actually a tool, a living thing that made a difference for him. And again, I just really want to encourage you, like, you know, be like Jesus. Spend time with scripture. Spend time learning scripture, but not just from like up here. But get it in here. Get it in your heart. Ooh, my iPad's just uh, switched itself off. So I want to encourage you. I'm going to give you a task. Okay? So this week, if you could put up the next slide, um, Nick, please. Nick, this week, I'd like you to, to think about, pick a verse of scripture that you can really focus on every day this week. Really meditate on it. It can be any scripture. I, I, if you're not sure, I, I've got one, a suggested one, that you could meditate on this one, but feel free to pick another, another scripture. But I would encourage you every day this week to find a scripture that you can really start using but because it's in your heart, not, not in your head. And I picked this scripture because it says, it's that bit in the middle, transcends understanding. So... This is communicating a truth about the peace of God, but it's not, it's not a head understanding about the peace of God, because it transcends our understanding. It's about a peace of God in our hearts and in, that goes into our minds in, in, in Christ Jesus. So it starts with our hearts. That's what we're talking about in terms of our secret life with, with God. It's something that gets deep in our hearts and then we can use scripture in the same way that Jesus used scripture you know when he when he he, he was he was tempted the other example as I said was in the garden of Gethsemane um, and you know what a terrible terrible situation you know Jesus was facing that he, he knew he'd lived the whole fact that he was he was the Messiah and he understood and had explained to people that being the Messiah meant he was gonna he was gonna die and in the Garden of Gethsemane um, you know he, 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 he's coming really to the real uh, uh, realization that 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 truth is going to happen in, in the next 24 hours and so he goes off alone, doesn't he? He goes away from the disciples, but he asks the disciples to pray, pray for him. Now, they don't do a very good job, actually. They all fall asleep. And understandably, Jesus gets a little bit annoyed with them. But I do think it's quite interesting that Jesus goes off on his own, but asks other people to pray for, pray for him. And again, I think that's a good, good principle. We're talking about our secret life with God, our, our alone time with God. But that doesn't mean you can't not ask someone to pray for you for your secret time with God in the same way that, that Jesus did in, in that situation. Now hopefully we'll do a better job than the disciples. We won't fall asleep. We will pray 
for those that ask. But if it's something that you don't find easy, I would encourage you, you know, a trusted person, ask them to pray for you. Ask them to uh, cover you in, in prayer with that secret time that you have, um, you have with, the, with the Father. And we know, next slide please, um, Nick, we know that in that time that Jesus had with the Father, he comes to th this point where he says, my Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but you, but as you will. And, you know, thank, thank Jesus for that yet, because if he hadn't have said yet, you know, he perhaps wouldn't have gone ahead with, with what he did with dying um, on, on the cross. But I think, again, our secret time, what this is saying, to me is that we can be brutally honest with the Father in our secret time with God. Jesus did not want to die. He didn't want to die. And he was able to say that to the Father, even though he knew that was the calling on his on his life. But yet he comes back to you know what is God's what is God's will. And again I would encourage you to think about you know things that you're struggling with your, with with you you know with you, with yourself you can be brutally honest with the father in the same way that um, that Jesus was but Jesus also did talk about the secret place being in the secret place um, next slide so this is from Matthew chapter 6 does someone want to read it for me Yep. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Thanks, Alex. So I find it quite ironic, actually, that um, you know the Lord's Prayer is probably one of the most spoken out loud prayers that we pray all together, isn't it? And yet the context for it is that this is what you should say in the secret place. That's, that's what Jesus says. This is a prayer for the secret place. And we've turned it into something that we often say together. And we say in a public place but actually it's all about um, it is all about the secret place that that is the context for, for, for those uh, for those words and I you know I would encourage you to to use this prayer you know in your in your quiet time in your secret place with, with, with God um, you can use it literally by, by reciting it but I think you know, we, off, we all know, I think, um, perhaps you don't, but it is actually maybe a model for how we use our time, our secret time, uh, with God. So, so when it says, um, our Father, hallowed be your name, you know, really that's about worship, hallowing, hallowing, that, that's an old-fashioned word for worship, really. Um, and that's a fundamental aspect of our secret life with God. It's about, it's about worshipping him. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's about looking for what God is doing in, in your life, in the life of people around you, in your circumstances, in your city, in your nation, in other nations. It's looking for what God is doing, what is his, his will. And it's praying into those situations and, and praying for an alignment between heaven and earth. Actually, Bill Johnson says, you know, this is probably 
the closest definition of understanding what God's will is. Because if, if you can't imagine it having, happening in heaven, it probably isn't God's will. God, God you know, so say sickness. You know, sickness doesn't happen in heaven, so it's not God's will. So that's a really good way to actually think about praying. It's like, can I imagine this situation, this circumstance happening in heaven? And if, it's, if you can't, possibly not, not, not God's will. But that can, again, form that communication and that conversation that we have um, with, the, with the Father. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, this is about provision. And I think, yes, it is about, you know, the, the food we eat and the clothes that we wear and uh, acknowledging that that comes from, uh, from the Lord. But it's also about the idea of Jesus as the bread of life. Um, um, it, 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 there's an echo back to actually the, um, the uh, temptation where one of the one of the um, one of the, the times when Jesus met Satan was about turning rocks into bread, and Jesus said, "Don't live by bread alone, um, but by every word that comes from the Father's mouth." So, so this is what this is talking about. It is about our food, but it's also about our our provision uh, from uh, from God. It's feeding ourselves with the Holy Spirit. Um, it's things like what Corinthians says, where it says, "Eagerly desire spiritual gifts." You know that those are the things we need to be pursuing in our secret time uh, with uh, with God. And, and the thing about your secret time with God and spiritual gifts is that actually, you know, and I've had this happen where there's something that you say secretly to God, and then someone prophesies it over you. You know, and that that's absolutely that's absolutely amazing. And that, re that can really speak to you and uh, speak to your heart. So again, that, it, it starts from that, that secret place um, with, uh, with the Father. Who do we need to forgive? You know, it talks, you know, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Who do we need to forgive? What sins do we need to confess? If someone's upset you, spend time in the secret place praying blessing on them. Um, think about what God thinks about them. That's, the, that's what we do in our secret life with God. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I mean, I've sort of made this point, but you know, this is Matthew 6. The temptation that Jesus went through is in Matthew 4, just a couple of chapters earlier. It's really interesting, isn't it, that that he's just gone through this temptation experience and then when when the disciples ask Jesus how, how should you pray in the secret place he says pray you don't be tempted you know he's just gone through it he knows what it's like you know um, and yeah I, I, I think there's sort of some significance uh, some significance with that so I want to come back to the point I made earlier actually that this is not about doing more. Again, I just want to remind you what I said because I'm really conscious that many of us will, will keep coming back to that, that place. Oh, I've got to do better. Or I've got to do more. It, this is about valuing that close, intimate, honest time with Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Um, this isn't about self-condemnation or shame that you're not doing enough. This is the point. This is about falling in love with God all over again. It's spending time with Jesus. It's letting the Holy Spirit back into our hearts. Um, this isn't about just, I don't know if this is appropriate, but this isn't just about inviting God into the lounge or the sitting room but it's inviting God into the bedroom you know it, it's that sort of intimacy with, with the father it, it's wooing God um, but I don't want people to feel like they're intimidated or, or like oh I can't do this um, 
you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. I think that's quite a helpful picture. What, you know, what are the sorts of things people, people do? You go for a long walk with your loved one, don't you? You send them a card telling them how much you love them. You could go for a long walk with Jesus, just on your own, some quiet time with Jesus. Go for a walk. Have you ever written a card and said how, how much God means to you? you know, that, that would be something, you know, perhaps a bit different if you've never done that before. Go out for a coffee with Jesus. Go to a cafe on your own, but in your mind think about time with Jesus. Some, some, some couples like to read to one another. Have you thought about reading a book with Jesus? Read it together with him. Just time with Jesus, reading a book. Chat to him about the day. You know, when you get home from work, this is what happened at work today, Lord. It is about falling in love with God all over again, that, that, that intimate time with him. Because then we find that place we can rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. So what, what I'd like you to do now is just we're just going to spend just a couple of minutes, just quietly, just like maybe with your eyes closed, and just, just think about God and Jesus and what he's done with you. Just reconnect with him. Tell him how you're feeling, where you're at. Just ask him to meet you now, where you are, quietly, on your own. Okay. I'd like us to stand as well now. Sorry, Nick. We've got this declaration, and the idea is that we all read this declaration, declaration together. So I hope everyone can see it. Okay, so I will value my secret life with God, learning to walk.
and will pursue a genuine encounter with God in the secret place. Understanding that without this, I cannot invite others to know God with integrity. I will take real responsibility for maintaining my relationship with God, breaking away from passive faith, where I get my inspiration mainly from others to speak to God. I will value private victories with God over public ones. Thank you for that. So after each week we've been doing